So now I'll invite, um, I think, Manuel to present on behalf of Alianza Zashire, the kind of lessons learned from all of their data collection process. So there you go, Manuel. Just let me know when to go to the next slide. Okay. Okay, thank you very much, Amy, and good afternoon to everyone. Uh, my name is Manuel Pastor, and I work as project coordinator at the Technical University of Madrid, which is a partner of Alianza Chile. So if you go to the next slide, please. So just a brief introduction about Alianza Chile. Alianza Chile is a multi-stakeholder partnership which is formed by the Spanish Cooperation Agency, uh, three leading energy companies in Spain, Iberdrola, Signify, which is the former Philips Lighting, and Acciona.org, the foundation of, uh, of Acciona Company, and also the, the Innovation and Technology for Development Center at the Technical University of, of Madrid. Uh, we, we have been working for, uh, since uh, 2014 in a pilot project that finished it in 2017. And after that experience, we, we are scaling it up now to all Syrian refugee camps in the north of Ethiopia in, a, in an intervention which is supported by the European Union Trust Fund for the Horn of Africa, which started in 2018. Uh, this project has two main components, one on grid, uh, which includes the connection of communal services and the installation of street lighting uh, uh, all through the national grid, which is close to the camps, and also an off-grid component, uh, which is based in the creation of a market-based delivery model for the supply of more than 1,700 solar home systems, both in the refugee camps and the host communities. So before going to, to, the, to, the, to the indicators, I would like to comment that uh, we will not um, go into concrete indicators or data. Uh, we think it's more interesting to go in, in our learnings after our uh, data gathering and analysis efforts. In the, and that we think some, some, of, the, some of them are, are interesting for, for this workshop. Also some, some preliminary notes. Um, all the information that we will comment now has been used both for planning and intervention design purposes. Although first it was in a more general way and for the, for the design of the intervention, we disaggregated and detailed this information. When possible and applicable, we gathered also gender disaggregated data and the main, the main tools we used was Kobo Toolbox and also uh, we try to, to gather all the information you reference it with GPS. And a general note, uh, cooking at household level, heating and cooling services are not included due to the project specifications because of all the partners' background and the context uh, features. So uh, go, going to general information, the, some, some key points. In our experience, it's very important to differentiate between the concept of household and shelter. As you may know, in the unit CR system, household refers to the uh, family unit, while shelter refers to the infrastructure. And in our experience, it's very important to separate among both of us, because, for example, in a shelter may live more than one household, and that could affect uh, the way we design the intervention. And another, another key point in this regard that we, we found is that the shelter address is not all, always available and depending on the, on the model that uh, we, we plan to, to implement, it's a really important data. Also, mm, depending on, on the intervention's approach and the local context, the average stay at the camp is a key data that not always is, is available. In our experience in, in Syria refugee camps, Mm, the, there are a lot of secondary movements uh, in, the, in Ethiopia is a country where people are these people from Eritrea goes and, and they live very very soon uh, we are talking about less than one year in most of the cases and if we are planning for long-term interventions it's a it's a really important data finally uh, talking about uh, coordination mechanisms and their leaders, uh, we, we saw the, the data set proposed by GPA and, and we think that include the leader and how these uh, coordination mechanisms are organized is a really relevant uh, qua qualitative data. And especially when there are projects or interventions with different or complementary approaches. 
for example, market solutions versus free delivery, product versus service approaches, and training training interventions that can be linked with later livelihood opportunities. And the final point in this slide, uh, in in our in our opinion, the uh, mapping of energy training institutions or programs and energy related capacities in the area uh, could be very helpful for, for program and project design. Next slide, please. Well, yes, uh, in this slide, we, we mixed uh, energy for households and productive uses. And the, the first two points, uh, what we wanted to, to reflect, to, to express, is that uh, although all the detailed information that we have seen before in, in the different uh, tables and so on, this information is, is, is critical and is very important, but then it's important to, to analyze it as a whole. Because for example, for us, that allowed to differentiate between the two kinds of businesses, high consumption businesses like uh, restaurants, barberies, hotels, and low energy demanding businesses, like could be small shops. And uh, what we did is we adopted different solutions for, for, for both cases. And, and although uh, regarding, uh, sorry, also regarding businesses, we, would, we wanted to mention two special cases that uh, I was before in the, in the, in the enterprises group, and, and we mentioned both of them. One, the electricity distribution businesses, because we will we will work in, in the energy sector and depending on how we approach we incorporate and we involve them in the in the project there could be both an opportunity or a risk because we, we are entering into the market and on the other hand the the mobile charging shops because they should be considered from both the business per perspective they they need to to be profitable but also from the user's point of view because they are really critical and they provide a in most of the cases a really essential uh, basic need and going to the final slide some some points regarding uh, energy for community facilities mm, like we did in 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 the in the businesses case we, with the information we gathered, we, we separated among low consumption facilities like recreative, theoretical training centers, etc., and high consumption. That could be hospital, uh, school, or even the, um, the communal kitchens, which is the special case uh, stated there. Uh, in, in, the, in the camps where we are working, uh, the, due to well, context factors um, and, the, for example, the Ethiopian government doesn't allow to, to collect firewood. Uh, the, the most typical solution in the camps is to build electrical communal kitchens uh, for everyone in the camp to use them, but they have a really huge uh, electricity demand, over 50 kV per kitchen, and there are more than seven or eight per camp. So you can imagine that considering this kind of communal facilities in a different way is, is a must to, to properly design the intervention. And the last point uh, the, regarding street lighting, for us, there are two main points. One, the verification. When we gather the data among the writing information, uh, where the maps say that the street lighting is, but uh, in our experience, it's, it's, it's critical to cross-check with a field visit to, to see in the field uh, really how many or what percentage of these lights are, are working. In our case, we're less than 10%, which uh, conditions a lot how we designed the, the street lighting part. And uh, we complemented it we, for the prioritization of lighting areas. We, we mixed, on the one hand, the, the technical criteria, but also we tried to incorporate the, the opinion and the, the, the perceptions of the local population through, through well, as a, a community participatory mapping exercise with different focus group to, to take also their opinion into account when prioritizing the, the lighting areas, considering both protection and productive factors. And that's all from my side. If you have any comment or, or question, I'm, I'm open to it. Thank you.